Hello, in this video I will show you how you can start off your sculpts by building base meshes. There are several good ways of creating a base mesh and often a combination of the different ways is the best option. This episode will go over the skin modifier and in later episodes I'll go over metaballs and boolean operations. I've made this tutorial in Blender 2.8 but all the controls are exactly the same in 2.7 they're just in slightly different locations. So the very quickest way of starting off a sculpt is to subdivide your cube by pressing Control 5 and that automatically sets up a subdivision surface with the amount of detail depending on the number you click. So Control 3 will give you 3, 4, 4 and 5, 5. So I press Control 5 and got 5 subdivisions. Then I can apply that, change to my sculpting tab, tick the Dine Topo button up here, don't worry about the warning but do be aware that this will modify your topology a great deal. There's also the Dyne Topo down here where you can get the brush size and detail and then you can start sculpting away. That's the very quickest way, but this isn't very useful for when we want to create something like a person because we have to grab the snake hook tool here and start pulling it around, trying to get a torso and then a head here and then it's all flat over here and it's quite tricky to work with. So that's why we need base meshes. They quickly get us to a point so we don't have to go around sculpting like this in order to get our base mesh. And it's a much quicker way of getting to a good starting point. So let's go back to modeling with the tab up here and I'll go back to object mode with tab and delete what we've got there. Now I'm going to press shift A to add my cube again. So we're back to the start. So how can I make a good base mesh? Well there's several ways. One really good way is with the skin modifier. So let's look at the skin modifier. First I go into edit mode with tab, so I've got edit mode up here and with all my vertices selected, make sure you're in vertices mode up here or you can press 1 on your keyboard, then press alt M. That will merge all your vertices into the center because all we need for this is one vertice. You can also get there by deleting all your vertices except one, as long as you get to the same place. Now I can create a base mesh by pressing E to extrude and pulling out that vertice. So I've just pulled it upwards. I'll go into front view for this because it'll be easier and I'll just grab that and pull it back into the middle and this will be my leg, hip, torso, couple of those, shoulder and all the time just pressing E to extrude, elbow, forearm. I don't want to do the hands at the moment and I will do those separately with either metaballs or the skin modifier and then add them to this mesh later. Let's grab this one, E to extrude and pull up the neck and the head. Now I've only done one side so I can select these three vertices here, Shift D to duplicate, Shift D and then pull them over there and scale in the X, S, X, minus one. So scale in the X axis, minus one. I'll grab that, pull it over a bit, select these two and press F to fill. I'll do the same with this side select these two, F to fill. Now once I have my base mesh like this, I can go across to the modifiers, that's where this spanner is. If you're in 2.79, they'll just be across the top here, but they all do the same thing. Add modifier, skin modifier. Now this would be fine to work on, but it's much easier if we also add the subdivision surface modifier. I'll put the views up slightly so we've got a bit of detail. Now if we want to add some thickness to this, we can go to wireframe mode with Z and you can select each of your vertices and press Control A and scale them up to the desired size. So Control A to scale. If you feel like, let's say you want another vertice in here, then you can subdivide the two of these. In Blender 2.79 it's with your spacebar or in Blender 2.8 right click and you get the mesh context menu and press subdivide. Then Control A and you can scale these things up. You can select two at a time and scale them up if you want to. And let's say for some reason you wanted everything in line because you hadn't done it in front view and they were all skewed off in one direction, then just select several and scale in whatever axis you want to flatten them to, in this case Y, and then press zero. And then you can flatten your vertices like that. Now if I go back to solid mode with Z on my keyboard, you can see that occasionally it does this sort of thing and we can't have that for sculpting. Usually you can get out of that by clicking on the vertices near the distortion 
and scaling it. And you can see there the distortion changes as I scale. So it looks a bit odd at the moment, but I can sculpt out the detail later on. Also, if scaling hasn't worked, often just moving it into a different position helps as well. But you do have to go around checking that you haven't got any of those anomalies. Now let's say we wanted to go to sculpting. We have to go back to object mode with tab, object mode up here, and apply our skin modifier and subdivision surface modifier. Remember to always apply the modifiers from the top down so you won't get any errors. Now you may find this fine for sculpting, but many times you want to have a completely symmetrical object. So what I would normally do is use the auto mirror tool. That's not available yet in Blender 2.8, as far as I'm aware. I'm sure it will arrive soon, so you just make sure your pivot point is in the middle of your mesh, or roughly in the middle, and then click the auto mirror and it will divide it in half. In this case, without the auto mirror tool, we can use the bisect tool. So if I go back into edit mode now, I'll select all, I'll go to front view, go up to the mesh menu and press bisect. That will give me a line that I can cut through my shape, so somewhere around there, and I can change the position with this handy tool here, and I've got the parameters here as well. I don't need to fill the hole that it leaves because I'm going to mirror, and I'm going to clear the outer. Difficult sometimes to see which is the inner and outer, but it doesn't matter in this case. Okay, so now we've got a bisection. We need to make sure that our pivot point or object center is right in the middle. So we can select all, we'll go to front mode for this, and I'll grab my object and move it into the middle like this, slightly away from the center to give me a bit of room for maneuvering. Then I can go up to the modifiers, add modifier, mirror, and it will mirror across the other side. It's not quite merged in the middle, so I can select this loop with Alt left click for a change, grab that in the X with G, then X, and pull them together. Oh, do remember to have clipping enabled. So now when I grab in the X axis, it will clip them together. So now our mesh is ready and it's purely symmetrical. I can apply the mirror in object mode. So tab to object mode, apply the mirror, and then let's go into sculpt mode and we're ready for sculpting. And now we've got a base mesh. It's much quicker to create our model. And at this point we can turn Dyne Topo on and start pulling things around into position. Now when you have a mesh like this, the inflate brush can be really handy. So I want to broaden my shoulders. I can just get my inflate brush and pull that out. Broaden the arms a bit, pull that out, and so on. And you can see that the mesh changes as I use it with the Dyne Topo turned on. And start off with a very low detail, which is a high pixel count here, as long as you've got relative detail on, and go across creating your mesh. Then you can use the snake hook tool here and start pulling your mesh around as you see fit. But it helps to have some sort of shape before you start doing this, hence the skin modifier and how useful it is. So hopefully you get the idea from that. I won't go too far with this model. In the next episode, I'll tell you how you can create things like hands. With things like the feet, I would generally add them with the skin modifier, but hands can be a lot more tricky and detailed. So in the next episode, I'll talk about metaballs and if I can fit it in, Boolean operations. So I hope that helps and thanks for watching.